Cartesian vectors and addition of Cartesian vectors. So first we're going to discuss the right-handed coordinate system. So we have x and y. And now to determine where, um, which direction the positive z axis should be, you use the right-handed coordinate system. So z can either be um, this way or this way. So when you figure out whether it's up or down. So basically how you do that is you point your fingers in the direction of x, curl your fingers towards y, and then you can see that my thumb is pointed up. So that means that Z is up just like my thumb. So let's try another one. Okay, so if I do the same thing, so I've got X and I need to curl towards Y and my thumb is going into the page, which means that Z goes into the page. We could try another one. We could say x, y. So which way is z going? So we go. This is kind of backwards. So if my fingers point towards x and y curls, my thumb is pointing into the page. Well, it's more downward. So in, it's down instead of up for this one. It's basically the opposite of what's right here. So just like in um, the two uh, with just x and y, X is considered I, unit vector. Y is considered J. And now Z is considered K. So a vector in three dimensions can be written as a X plus a Y plus a Z. Or with each of these as a scalar, it's a X times the unit vector i plus ay, sorry, there's no vector there, ay the scalar times uh, the unit vector j plus az times the unit vector k. So let's draw this out. If we have y, x, z. All right, so we've got our AZ component, our AX component, and our AY component. So let's form a little box. Very difficult to draw um, a resulting vector in three dimensions. So I find it easier that if you draw the box out, easier to tell where that A is going to meet up. So right here in this corner, that's the resultant A. So A projected onto the X, Y axis gives us A prime. So A prime is a right triangle, right? So this is A, Y, and this is A, X. So we can get that A prime is equal to the square root of A, X squared plus A, Y squared. Now this is also a right triangle, this being the right angle right here. So this is A prime and this is AZ to find A. So we got that A is equal to the square root of A prime squared plus AZ squared. So we substitute A prime squared in. So that's A is going to be equal to the square root of this squared would just be AX squared plus a y squared plus a z squared. So that's a very handy formula. So now a can also be expressed as um, with respect to three angles. The angle from a to the x axis, which is considered alpha, a to the y axis, which is considered beta, and a to the z-axis, which is considered gamma. So that gives us that cosine of alpha 
is equal to AX over alpha. Sorry, that's AX over A. I have to use the phonetic alphabet in my job, and so sometimes I call capital letter A alpha, but it's all this is alpha. So cosine of beta is equal to AY over A, and cosine of gamma is equal to AZ over A. So the other thing that we can find from this is a directional vector or position vector and that's called UA, which is equal to the vector A divided by its magnitude. So that would be equal to AX over A I plus AY over AJ plus AZ over AK. And so this and this equation can combine such that the positional vector is cosine alpha i plus cosine beta j plus cosine gamma k. So using this equation that we derived from this triangle, we can substitute ax in for a cosine um, alpha. So a is equal to the square root of a squared cosine squared alpha plus uh, a squared cosine squared beta plus a squared cosine squared gamma. And now we can square the whole thing. So we'd get a squared is equal to a squared cosine squared alpha plus a squared cosine squared beta plus a squared cosine squared gamma. Now we divide the whole thing by a squared and we get that one is equal to cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is also a very helpful equation. So next, that was how to describe a vector using three, uh, three different angles. And now we're going to look at how to describe it using two different angles. So if we draw that same right-handed coordinate system, x, y, z, you get that a y a x a z let's draw that cube so that we can e easily find where a should be okay now A is going to go from the vertex to the corner. So that's A. And like I showed you earlier, A prime is the AX and AY right there. So we can call from AX to A prime theta and AZ to A, B. So now we can express it using just those two vectors. So A, Z is going to be equal to A cosine of B and A prime is going to be equal to A and that's sine B. So if this is phi, right, this right here is also a prime. And so that sine, a prime is equal to a sine phi. And now ax is equal to a prime cosine theta. We substitute a prime in for a sine phi, and you would get that a sine phi 
cosine theta is equal to ax. And now ay is equal to a prime sine theta. So a is equal to sine phi. A y is equal to a sine phi sine theta. So you can express your vector a as ax, which is a sine b cosine theta i plus a sine b sine theta j plus a cosine b k. So that's another way to express a three-dimensional vector. And finally, just like before, we can use um, combine the x components, combine the y components, and combine the z components to find the resultant um, vector if we're adding them. So if we add the vectors, we'd get that the resultant force is equal to the sum of all the x components in the i direction plus the sum of all the y components in the j and the sum of all the um, z components in the k direction. And there will be an example of that to follow.